Okay, statistics and precalculus. This one's getting a little cockeyed with our rational exponents, but I think you can handle it. We're on it. Roots as powers, powers as roots. Roots as powers, powers as roots. Remember, you had this yesterday, a to the m over n, where a is the base, m is the power, n is the root, and you remembered it by saying, hey, the root is under the ground. The root's under the ground. The root's under the ground. It's all good. You can also treat this as a root this way. Remember, you had the m was the power and the n was the root. So you have the nth root, take the nth root, and then take that to the mth power. So that's the same. You were doing this yesterday, essentially, but you can do it again the same way. It's slightly different, you know, Writing this as a rational exponent, 25 to the 3 halves. That's the second That's the second root and the third power. So the square root of 25 to the third power, the square root of 25 was 5, that's 3, that's 125. And again, once you get good at these, you can do them in one step, and that's totally fine. 32 to the 2 fifths, that's asking you for the fifth root and the second power. So you look for the fifth root of 32, take that to the second power, the fifth root of 32 is 2, of course, squared is 4, and you are good to go. So we got that. You can also write it as, you know, the, the nth root of a to the m power, where the m is inside. The power can be inside the radical instead of outside. It depends on how you do it. It can be more useful one way or the other way. When we're simplifying these ones here, it's going to be more useful this way. So let's take a look. Right, with a rational exponent, the square root of x to the fifth. If I want to do the square root of x to the fifth, that's the fifth root, or the fifth power, and the square root. So that's x to the 5 halves. No problem. The cube root of t to the 12th would be t to the 12 thirds. However, 12 thirds is a lovely, nice number. It's actually 4. So that becomes t to the 4th. No radicals, no fractions, no nothing, just t to the 4th. Here's one that comes out mixed. a to the 4 halves would become a squared. b to the 11 halves does not simplify. But you're also distributing this power. This is like taking the one-half power of everything. So you took a to the fourth to the one-half power and b to the eleventh to the one-half power. And then you can simplify the ones that simplify. Take a minute and try some of these out. Pause, work them out, and we'll take a look. Here we go. A to the three-halves is e to the nine-fifths. You can pause and check your work again. Notice that this one down here, you have the cube root of x to the 12th, which would be x to the 4th. The cube root of y to the 6th, 6 over 3 is 2. Cube root of z to the 15th, 15th power, third root, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So you end up with these powers. You could also write this with z to the negative 5th because it's in the denominator. It's all there. It's all good. What happens if you've got a negative reciprocal? Well, this is okay. It's not such a big deal. It's not going to happen very often in the next couple days, weeks. It may happen sometime in calculus next year, but then it's no problem. If it's a, if you want it to be reciprocal, then the negative sign just goes to the power. So for example, oh, I thought this was going step by step. 16a to the eighth to the negative three fourths. That's 16 to the negative 3 fourths and a to the 8th to the negative 3 fourths. 16 to the negative 3 fourths is your fourth root, which is 2, cubed, which is 8, and the reciprocal, 1 8th. a to the 8th to the negative 3 fourths, 8 times negative 3 fourths is negative 24 fourths, or negative 6. Or you could also say what's 3 quarters of 8, that's 6. So a to the negative 6, which is 1 over a to the 6th, so your total answer 1 over 8 a to the 6th. Take a minute and work this one. Very similar. And here's your answer. And we're good for today. Have a lovely one.